Song of Solomon, chapter 8, last chapter, all the way from Genesis 1. <clears throat> o, thou, o that thou wert as my brother in the family, that sucked the breast of my mother, when I should find thee without, outside, not inside. I would kiss thee, yea, I would not be despised. And it's a kissing of a, of a brother and sister. If you were my brother. So without, the brother's been away. Liking Christ as a brother who, who's on a journey. Who's away. <clears throat> you miss him. I would lead thee, guide thee, and bring thee into my mother's house. Well, that's exactly what uh, Isaac did with Rebecca. And that's where they consecrated their marriage. Who would instruct thee? A mother who talks to her daughter, Titus chapter 2. I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine. Of the juice of my pomegranate. So there's a juice of pomegranate. It's nothing new. You know, the last few years, pomegranate, pomegranate, pomegranate. You know, it comes out this big thing. Well, there it is in the Bible. And then spice wine. His left hand should be under my head. And his right hand should be should embrace me. <coughs> I charge you, old daughters. Psalm 2, 7 and 3, 5. O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love, until he please. Awake Romans 13, 11 and John 11, 11. The bridegroom speaks. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up, under the apple tree. So I wouldn't, what we see with the apple trees comparing to love and, and beauty, is I wouldn't think that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is an apple tree. You didn't check your scriptures when you said apple. You didn't read your Bible when you said it was an apple. Bible ignorance. You're a fool. I mean, would, would, would God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ liking his his bride, <clears throat> would the bride like liken to her groom a tree that caused all the sin and despair and troubles and problems and hardship? Oh my dear, you're like an apple. Yeah, the apple that caused all the pain and misery in this world. No, absolutely not. Matter of fact, that spiced wine that we saw in verse two that might be that might be uh, apple cider. Spiced cinnamon, mm -mm -mm. and you don't have to wait for it to go go old. When it's nice and fresh, mm -mm. I raised thee up under an apple tree. Well, that's the if that was the the tree of knowledge, good of you. Why would God? Why would the hey? Here's the tree you can't have. Let's have a picnic under it. Think about it. <clears throat> there, thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bear thee. You mean she was born under an apple tree? In an apple orchard? Well, we had something to do with an apple tree. Where the birth brought thee forth that bear thee. Set me as a seal. I'm looking for my notes here. Second Corinthians one two, Ephesians one thirteen, four thirty, I believe. Upon thy heart, not head, as a seal upon thy arm. Outside the flesh, the heart is the inside, the heart. Hearts inside, the arms on the outside. 
So where do most people put a tattoo? They put it on their arm. You know, the Bible tells you you're not supposed to do it. But then you put it on the place where the Bible says it's sealing. You can't escape the Bible. Go to a tattoo parlor and ask, say, listen, where is the most frequent place they put a tattoo? Where do you see them? It's always on an arm. <clears throat> I mean, if you're, going to, if you're going to rebel against God, you're going to do rebellion against God from his word. It's plain and simple. For love is strong as death. The arm symbolizes strength. He, she just said that, uh, verse 3, his left hand should be under my head and his right hand should embrace me. Who would dare attack a woman when her, when her husband, her groom, has got her in such an embrace? It's where the, where it's where the, the bride feels comfort. She, she's locked in the strength of his arms. She's protected. <clears throat> Death, you can't do nothing. Death has no strength. Death's strength is it takes all from you gone. Once you die, you can't do nothing. You know, you can take a body that's dead without the coffin, without the casket, and all that other stuff. And throw it in the ground, throw all the dirt on it, it ain't gonna do him no it ain't gonna feel nothing. <clears throat> jealousy jealousy is cruel as the grave. Proverbs six thirty five twenty seven four. How jealousy, there is in the law, if a man thinks that his wife has stepped outside of him, it's called the spirit of jealousy. I believe that's in Numbers. Jealousy brings an anxiety. And yet in Numbers, I think it's Numbers, where it mentions that jealousy, there's really no condemnation. If you don't know and you have a suspicion, then what's more cruel than a grave? Jealousy. The coals. The coals. It's what you put for a fire. Proverbs 6.28 are coals of fire which have a most vehement flame. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thy arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire which has a most vehement flame. This is the bridegroom speaking. And he talks about his birth, her birth in five. Bring her to a tree. Sealing. Jealousy. Fire. Many waters cannot quench love. Well, Noah's time, many waters. But eight people, the love of God. Neither can floods drown it. Are you telling me that the love of the bridegroom that I have, you tell me in the Song of Psalms that <clears throat> like Paul, no death, no angels, no principality. You tell me there's it written here in the Song of Psalms in chapter 8 that I am sealed, which I am, 
and that I have a security of the love of God? Now Solomon is writing to his bride. Oh, death will never pass us. Jealousy, the flames of fire. Oh, baby. You mean jealousy, the grave, vimeant flame, waters, floods cannot separate me from the love of the bridegroom? If I take scripture with scripture? If I take scripture with scripture, and if I'm not twisting the scriptures, there for me is the eternal security that I am sealed and I can't lose it. Found between the bridegroom and the bride. The bridegroom speak, speaking. Not for Old Testament Israel under law. They don't have that security. I do with the bridegroom. That they rejected. You realize for them the law has really never ended. For the Jew today. And you know that in the tribulation period of Jacob's trouble, you know the law is coming definitely back. They will have their temple some way. <clears throat> Today, if they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, all right, they're supposed to do the Passover. Where do they do it to? In their dining room. But they're supposed to go to Jerusalem, but there's no temple there. They're still under the law. Their law points to the one that is the, the Messiah. Their prophets point to Jesus Christ. The bride speaks. I didn't finish. The, many wars cannot quench, the, quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. Can't buy true love. If a man, if a man, but the Bible says, for God so loved the world, we love him because he first loved us. He didn't, Jesus Christ didn't give all his substance. He left glory and gained it all by the finished work of Calvary. He didn't lose nothing. He gained he just stepped out of glory for three and thirty-three and a half years. Now I'm not downplaying Jesus. I'm not downplaying his, his step into this rotten, miserable planet. But look at the victory he got, and look what he gained. And he hasn't even got his throne yet. But what can a man give? Man can't buy it. You can buy a woman, yeah, but it's not going to guarantee that she, she's going to love you. She just made this do it just for the money. She'd be a price of a whore. She would be a, a housekeeper instead of a housewife. The bride speaks. We have a little sister, and she has no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken of? It's a future. We're talking about a young girl. Be spoken of of a marriage. Maybe Israel. I don't know. And it's funny because the, because the note I have in my Bible says the, the reference here is obscure. What, what's, what's wrong with the verse? You said the word breast. You get worse than that on your television. They'll show you it. You're speaking about a young girl here, and, and if you think that's bad, it's not even really, she says she has none. So what's the problem? 
She hasn't been grown. She hasn't matured. And when she gets mature, what's going to be spoken of her? Of marriage, of life, future. Nakedness comes with birth and death. Yet, it is the source of pornography. It is the source of fornication. It is the source of adultery. Television is based upon violence and sex. And you go through here, oh, look, oh, look at this. Bible perverted. No. And Song of Solomon has much to speak about breasts. What's the problem? The Bible says, as far as your wife, you let her breast satisfy you all times. It doesn't go say go to a nightclub and, and watch a woman perform adulterous and fornication and pornographic acts. That would be wrong. There's a there's another whole chapter in Leviticus given. Thou shalt not see, uncover the nakedness of your aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of mother. Thou shalt not cover the nakedness of your sister. Thou shalt uncover the nakedness of any one of your kinship. Song of Solomon tells you if it's a husband and wife, there is nothing wrong with the talk. Hebrews says the marriage bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And when you read through the Song of Solomon as a husband and wife, it's a beauty. And then you let your wife or your spouse go out there bearing all that she has for the world to see. That is wrong. Oh, I wouldn't read that. Oh, look. And then, like I said, you let your, you let the females of your family go out, and when they bend over, or just so you don't have to bend over, you let them show everything that they've been gifted as just for you. A husband and wife. If she be a wall, the bridegroom speaks. Christ is the foundation. Paul says in, in Corinthians that no other man can lay. So get rid of that man that if he, in verse 7. Christ is the foundation, not man. That no man can lay, but Christ has laid it. If she be a wall, built upon the foundation, we will build upon her a palace of silver, redemption. And if she be a door, well, that's interesting. The door, and the Jewish people, is where they put the blood of the Passover over. We will enclose her with boards of cedar. What good is a door if it doesn't have the frame? Make her of use. That's what you're doing. She ain't just a pile of lumber. She's in use. Bride speaks. I am a wall. I am a wall. Verse 9, she shall be a wall. I am a wall, and my breast like tower. Unlike verse 8, the bride is mature. And gifted. You know, it's amazing. Something that God has given to a baby and for a husband is exploited all over magazines and, and television and videos. That is supposed to be for a husband and for an infant. If I could be clean. Then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. Christ. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman. Yeah, Baal. 
Why did Israel keep the name Baal? You weren't even supposed to mention the false god's name. And they got cities named for Baal. That is the god, that is the chief god of the uh, of the heathen. He has led out the vineyard unto keepers. Does that sound like a parable that Christ said? There was a certain man that built the vineyard and hedged it about, put a tower, went off to a far place and let it out to laborers. Scripture with scripture. Every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. And I got First Kings ten twenty seven. The certain man that went away sent servants to him to get the fruit thereof, and they killed and beat them all. And then at last he sent his son, and they killed him outside. My vineyard, Isaiah says, the vineyard is Israel, which is mine. Is before me, thou, O Solomon. Oh, look at that. The vineyard is given to the bride. Must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof, two hundred. Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions, hearken to thy voice. Cause me to hear. Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like. To a roll or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices closes with a second advent passage. Come, Song of Solomon. Close, he's not asleep. Don't wake him up. If Song of Solomon closes with to the bridegroom, make haste, come. That's how the book closes. Last book we we did, Ecclesiastes closes with, Fear God and keep his commandments. Song of Solomon closes with, Come, Lord, come. The blessed hope for the church and the rapture. We close it.